celebrate the third week in ordinary time. In order to help preserve the dignity of our sacred worship, we ask that you please take this moment to switch your cell phones to the silent or vibrate mode. Our second collection this evening is to help offset the annual cost of our parish finance assessment. And now please stand to greet our celebrant, Father Ivan Lovrich, as we join in our opening hymn, Sing a New Song. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from the mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Shout with gladness, dance for joy, O come before the glad tambourines and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to this Holy Mass, which we offer tonight for John Lee. On this third Sunday in ordinary time, we are called to devote this prayer to our own growing sense of respect and love for the Holy Scripture as a way of God, to, as a way in which God speaks to us. And so as we begin this Mass, let us in a particular way make sure that as the readings of this Mass are presented to us, and as we listen to them, we listen them with an effort to truly hear what the message of the Lord to us is, so that from Sunday to Sunday, we may slowly grow, not only in the knowledge of the Scripture, but in the knowledge of God's will that is revealed to us through it. And as we do so, let us ask our Lord for his grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. God, heavenly King, 
ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, "Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you." So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took 3 days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. justice 
and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week's Gospel brought us the message that Jesus addressed to those who were trying to follow him when they asked, Lord, where do you stay? And he told them, come and see for yourself. Today's gospel brings to us another invitation that Jesus addresses to the people, namely, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But before we look into that, I think it's also good to look into the very beginning of this gospel, which tells us that these words and these actions of Jesus follow after the death of John the Baptist, actually after his arrest. And at that time, Jesus, since John is now removed from the picture, almost picks up the ministry of John. He even repeats the same message that we can find in the gospel that John the Baptist told. Jesus says, repent and believe in the gospel. However, there is a difference in this gospel, difference between Jesus and John. While John was telling the people that a kingdom of God is near, that it's almost there, that it's soon to be arriving, Jesus is telling us that a kingdom of God is at hand, literally at a hand's grasp. Pope Benedict XVI beautifully surmised in his book about Jesus of Nazareth that the fullness of the kingdom of God is actually present in the living person of the Son of God, namely Jesus. Therefore, when he says to us that a kingdom of God is at hand, he literally points to himself. And the people of his time could extend their hand 
and literally reach him. The full meaning of that is that a kingdom of God is so close to them that it can be literally touched. Therefore, the invitation, come and follow me, and I will make you the fishers of men. The difference that this gospel presents to us is really crucial, because no longer is the kingdom of God far and distant. And this message is equally applied to all of us, that a kingdom of God is literally within a grasp of our hand, that if we only extend it, if we only reach out to it, we too, like these men from the gospel, will be able to touch it in a particular way that happens and takes place in the Eucharist, when both by listening the word of God and then receiving the Eucharistic sacrament, we literally extend our ears and our hand and receive both the word and the food that comes from the kingdom of God. But this is only a part of the message. A second one, the one in which Jesus invites us to follow him, is equally important because it tells us that this is a choice, an invitation that bears a response. And because, as St. Paul told us, the time is running out, Jesus impresses upon us that the time to respond is right now. Therefore, all of us who come to him have to make a response, whether we follow him or whether we do not. And the invitation that Jesus poses to these four people, Simon and his brother Andrew, and then James and, son of, and, then James and his brother John, sons of Zebedee, is to follow him. But what happens is that both of them, all four of these people, have to actually leave behind what they have been doing. And we hear from James and John that they were doing the nets. They were mending the nets in the boat together with their father. The invitation to follow Jesus actually carries itself in by leaving what was previously my business, my work, my life, and carrying into something new. Which is the reason why Jesus told us, repent. Repent in its original meaning literally means turn around, follow a different path of life. Now, why is this message still today so important to be reminded and spoken to each and every one of us? Because the invitation that we have to follow the Lord is the same requirement that is given to each and every one of us. We sometimes may have a different dynamic in our relationship with God, thinking that the faith that we have grown up along is a part of our life. And many people do find a place for faith in their life for as long as the faith is something that is supportive of their life sometimes therapeutic, helping us when we struggle with different things, with problems in life, with family issues. We lean on our faith, and this is for some people what the purpose of the faith is, to be there to uphold my life. But this is a very mistaken view of it, because the purpose of the faith is not to have something to lean on when we fall on difficult times and moments in our life. The purpose of faith is actually to lead our life. And unless we follow in faith, the one who calls us. Unless we literally step out of the boat and try to go after him, faith remains unfulfilled. It does not bear its own fruit. It is only as if we, we Christians truly understand that when Jesus extended his invitation to us, he did us a tremendous honor. And this is a deeply personal thing. That if God did this, tremendous honor of inviting us to follow him, then the only sensible approach is to actually say, here I am, Lord, and to strive to do what these four people did, to follow him. Now, in the life of a priest, this literally means, in many ways, leaving behind everything else. The family that you're born in, and the possibility of having your own family, the possibility of having your own children. And it's not seen as a great sacrifice in as much as it's seen as a great honor because God chose you to be his messenger. God chose you to proclaim his word. Of all the many different people in the world, of the billion plus Catholics, God looks into you to invite you to be his priest. That is why the sacrifice that a priest is invited to do is not a sacrifice. It's a living and beautiful giving of a life to God in service to where he calls me and leads me. 
However, in some ways, this is not applicable only to a priest. It applies to everyone. Because unless we too, in our own lives, allow God to lead us, and not only to serve as something that we lean on to, when we have trouble in our life, when we actually change our life to be following the way of the Lord, then the full realization, the full development of our relationship to God happens. To use an image from your life for those who are, of you who are married, when you decided to have a family, would it even be possible if you said to your wife, for example, you know, honey, we're going to get married, but every night you're going to go home to your own mom and dad, and I'll be sleeping in my own house, but we're still going to be a couple and a family, right? Would that work? Come on. I have a friend whose marriage actually almost fell apart because his, his wife wouldn't, was not able to give up the relationship that she had with the mom and dad. She thought that her life is going to carry on as it was before. Thankfully, she changed her way of seeing things. When you started and get ready to be married, you literally had to step out of your previous life. Now, you didn't burn the bridge behind you. You didn't abandon your parents. You didn't forget them. You didn't neglect them. In the same way, God is inviting us to do the same thing. When he tells us that we need to step out of our old life, it doesn't mean that we need to forget, neglect, or leave the people behind. But it does mean that we have to respond to him and start something that is completely new. And unless we do this, nothing in the sense of the fullness of our relationship with God will take place. Just as your marriage would never take place if you and your wife both remained in your parents' house. Today's gospel really tells us that at the heart of our own faith and response to God is a different dynamic that we ought to see ourselves as one who follow God, as one whose life is shaped in exactly this way, that my whole life is actually seeking to follow where God calls me. That a faith that I have in God is actually guiding me. It is pointing to the goal of my life. It is not merely there for me when I have a difficult time to have something to support me. It is not faith in that sense. It is a therapy. And that's not what we are here for. Our God has done us a tremendous honor of inviting us into relationship with Him, where He has given us a chance to be His disciples, a possibility to apply our lives into something that is more valuable than anything else in this world. Of many different vocations that people in this life have, to be God's own disciple, to be His follower, is the pinnacle of what success should be. Because it eventually leads us, as did with these four people, to enable other people to reach out to God, to be in conversation and touch with Him, and a relationship that will eventually bring them together with us into the kingdom of heaven. And when we see our life in this way, then the way how we live our faith, how we choose and what choices do we make, becomes different. Then the faith becomes the leading thing of our life then following God really becomes a matter and question of honor, not a duty, not a sacrifice, not a burden. Then raising our children in faith becomes actually enabling them to see how tremendously great blessing is to be born in a Catholic family and to know God from a childhood, rather than to have to struggle to find Him as an adult. Then leaving the church or leaving the faith becomes impossible becomes something that I cannot even think of. Because how can I leave something that is the most precious in my life? The vocation and calling that is more beautiful than anything else that I can ever be. And this, obviously, goes first and foremost for somebody who, like myself, for God knows what reason, has been called to be a priest. But all of us, in some way, are invited to follow God. Let's try to rediscover once again for ourselves on this Sunday the depth of this beautiful invitation that God gave us, the honor that comes from it, and finally the blessing 
that is meant to be ours if we respond to it. Let us now stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified on Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us now offer our prayers. that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide Pope Francis, Cardinal Dolan, and all of our bishops who are the modern day successors of Peter and the apostles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elected officials and all world leaders may work more closely together in this new year in order to bring an end to the coronavirus and help restore us to a more normal and healthy society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will bless and protect all of our armed forces, healthcare workers, and emergency responders who are presently serving at home or abroad. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will inspire our elected officials to both recognize and protect the right to life of all of God's children, both born and unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will call many more men and women to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are presently sick in mind, body, or spirit may receive comfort and strength from God during their time of need. We also remember all of those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That William Wynne and Rose Pacchioni and all who have died and gone before us will now be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Robert Lee, for whom today's Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you this prayer, humbly asking that you may grant us what we have prayed for through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Neither money nor weapon 
weapons for fighting, but nets for fishing, my daily now pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, For these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at a time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us in our prayers, our Savior instructed us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lord, of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Look toward the Lord and be radiant that your faces not be
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. We are many parts. We are all one body. The body of Christ. And the gifts we have. The spirit of love make us one indeed. The one the love that the we share, one our the hope in despair, one the, body the cross of that we bear. The body of Christ. God of all. We look to you, we would be your servants true, let us be your love to all the world, we are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we have. The spirit of love make us one indeed. One the love that we share. One our hope in despair. One the cross that we bear. The body of Christ. So my pain is pain for you in your Christ. joy is my joy too the body of Christ all is brought together in the, the Lord we are the body many parts the we body are Christ. all one body the body of Christ and the gifts that we have, the body of we are given to share. The body of Christ. May the spirit of love make us one indeed. The body of Christ. One the love the that we share. One the body our of hope in despair. One, the cross that we bear. All you Christ. seekers, great and small, seek the greatest gift of all. The if you love, then the you will know. Spirit of love, make us one indeed, one the love that we share, one our hope in despair, one the cross that we bear.
We are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the Spirit of love make us one in One, the love that we share. One, our hope in despair. One, the cross that we Just have two announcements. If you have not yet done so, we invite you to please take home a copy of the 2021 church calendar on your way out of Mass today. Next week's second collection is to help support our own parish capital repair fund, which helps pay for such things as our recently unexpected church roof repair. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday and a good week. Thank you, Father. Go to the world, go into all the earth, go preach the cross where Christ renews life's worth. Baptizing as the sign of our rebirth.
Yeah. 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 It's refreshing rather than hearing something so hard. Thank you.